Hey everyone, sorry for the clickbaity kind of title. We'll get right into the tweak that I'm talking about, and then we'll talk a little bit more about BIOS 319 versus 317, as well as get into the results of my tweaks and everything. So let's get into it. To do this tweak, you're going to want to change your VRAM buffer size from 4 gigabytes to auto. To do this, you're going to go to your Armory Crate SE and then go over to Settings, down to Configuration, and then down to Graphics on the left-hand panel there. Change that from 4 gigabytes to auto. Then getting into it, why the hell should you change it or why the hell should you care? Here's the results here. So first I ran Red Dead Redemption 2, Cyberpunk, and a game I've been playing called SnowRunner. So for Red Dead Redemption 2, running BIOS 319 and then running 4GB on the left hand side and auto on the right hand side, we can see that we did get an FPS average increase on the auto setting as opposed to the 4GB setting. I chose to use Red Dead Redemption because in the past on the Steam Deck, setting the UMA frame buffer size to 1GB versus 4GB on the Steam Deck, 1GB uh, would produce better results in Red Dead Redemption 2. So it appears as though that's sort of the same case because when you're using the auto, the VRAM usage is very low. If you look in the top left there, you can see beside memory, that's the uh, VRAM usage there uh, on the G underneath the GPU, sorry. So the VRAM usage is significantly less versus the four gigabytes. The four gigabytes is trying to use most of it or if not all of it. And then the auto is only using like 400 megabytes worth. So it's a pretty big difference and there's a pretty decent FPS increase. Just for doing a lazy man's benchmark, I did do a more kind of like significant benchmark with the actual 1% lows, 0.1% lows for the last section here, but the results of the benchmark overall is still higher as well. Then over to Cyberpunk, we can see that at the end here, yes, the FPS average was higher on frame buffer size auto. Uh, but as well, if you watch the frame time buffer graph, that's the line that is going up and down in the top left hand corner there. That is the frame pacing and kind of how the frames get delivered. And if there's spikes, that will be a moment of stutter or choppiness, if you will. So keep an eye on that as well, because I do feel as though when it's set to auto that those frame time spikes are less and they don't spike as high as compared to four gigabytes. So again, just kind of keep an eye on that as you're going through the videos as well. Then finally over to a guilty pleasure of mine, uh, Snow Runner. If you've ever played it, congratulations. Um, if you haven't, it's a very challenging but fun, rewarding kind of off-roading game. If you're into smaller kind of built games, uh, more relaxed, like you're just kind of chilling and you're slow crawling around the world. It's a nice little game, especially have three buddies to play with. It's a blast. Anyway, getting into the results of this though, we can see that um, switching over from the auto to four gigabytes, we can see that our FPS average here, my custom run that was repeatable with the same daytime because you can select the same daytime as well. Uh, in four gigabytes, we can see that we got a 7.1.1% low and then compared to a 25.1.1% low. Uh, but taking even that out of the equation, just looking at the 1% lows, 27.7 uh, on four gigabyte versus 32.6 on auto. And then the overall frame av frame rate average as well, sorry, was a 40.6 on four gigabyte versus 42.8 on the auto. So we can see here, even running the worst BIOS in 319, that we're either gaining or at the very least maintaining performance when we switch over to auto. And we'll get into that with going into testing of 319 versus 317 with the BIOS. Next for testing of the BIOS 319 versus BIOS 317, what you're gonna to wanna to do to download it is go to this website here, the ASUS Ally ROG support site, go to BIOS firmware, scroll down to the second one where it says Easy Flash Utility, uh, download the BIOS 319, or sorry, BIOS 317, whichever BIOS you're flashing, regardless, same process, and then place that onto a USB drive. Now you're gonna need a USB-C hub or USB-C to USB drive or USB-C, whatever, something to connect to the USB-C port. Next, you'll wanna to go to your start menu, type in UEFI, and then click on the first option that comes up there, uh, advanced options, go down to the advanced options and then hit restart now. 
Then once it restarts, it'll bring you to this blue screen menu. You'll want to hit troubleshoot, advanced, and then UEFI firmware settings. And then it'll reboot again and then take you into the actual BIOS. On the flip side, if you want to just power down your device, power, uh, to get into the BIOS from a power down device, turn on the device. And then once you press it and turn it on, feel the vibration of the initial power on, immediately hold volume down and that will take you to the BIOS as well. And then when you're in the BIOS, what you're going to want to do is press Y to go over to advanced and then go to the top tab there from main over to advanced and then go all the way down to ASUS Easy Flash 3 utility. Your USB should be the first one there and you should be able to see the uh, BIOS file in there. It should say like RC and then the last numbers will be 17 or 19 depending on the uh, BIOS version that you have. Now moving into Cyberpunk and the head-to-head -head result of uh, BIOS 319 versus BIOS 317. And I'm only running uh, auto frame buffer now, seeing as we got uh, best results with auto in the previous tests. Now with this FPS average test, there wasn't honestly anything too much to write home about. Like it's pretty much neck and neck, like the exact same performance. I ran it multiple times and I was getting varying results from 39 FPS to 42 FPS on both sides. So it didn't really seem as though, at least in the benchmark environment, that the BIOS really made too much of a difference. In this case, switching over from 4 gigabytes to auto made the biggest difference. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2, running 317 versus 319, we got an overall average of 53.5 on 317 and an average of 54.16 on 319. Uh, both running auto frame buffer size, so as we can see here, not every game will benefit from this BIOS downgrade, at least in my testing. Then finally wrapping the BIOS comparison up, uh, looking at our results here, we got a 46 FPS average on auto running BIOS 317, and then we got a FPS average of 43.8 on auto running BIOS 319. Uh, FPS 1% low, 36.4 on uh, BIOS 317, and then 1% low, 31.8 on 319. Now we did get a 6.1.1% low and a higher 28.6 on the uh, 319 BIOS. Uh, that could just be attributed to just random stuttering in the game, something new loading. Uh, so I wouldn't take the 0.1% lows to heart too much, but definitely the 1% lows and the FPS average. Then to close things off, uh, I'll say that knowing PC computers and driver updates and how these things work, a driver update will come very soon, I'm sure. Within a week or two, no more, I'm sure. Given Asus's track record of pushing out drivers relatively quickly, uh, whether they're okay or not, that's another question. Uh, but if you can turn to the Ryzen 7000 X3D chips and the motherboards like burning up and that happening, Asus was pushing out driver updates like almost daily at one point. So we know that they can do the driver updates quickly and they know that this is an issue. They've confirmed it. So the uh, BIOS updates, sorry, not the driver updates. Um, but they've confirmed that the BIOS updates are an issue, so you can roll it back and get better performance in some games, if not most games. Uh, in my testing here, it didn't seem to make too much of a difference from uh, Cyberpunk and my Red Dead, just the two games I tested there. But it did make a difference in SnowRunner. Uh, now, we saw the biggest difference, though, was switching from 4 gigabyte frame buffer to auto frame buffer. And I did look online and see in some of the Facebook groups and the Reddit groups and stuff that people were switching to this as well. And they were saying, oh, yeah, my performance is better. It's less stuttery and whatever. So I figured I'd do a proper on test for it. Uh, besides that, if there's anything else you guys think I should do, um, I will be revisiting the 4GB, 8GB, and auto frame buffer size in a future video, and I'll be testing more games and be a little bit more in-depth with my test analysis. This video was just kind of a quick and dirty, uh, but still hopefully decently information dense uh, to prove, yes, okay, at least from switching from the uh, four gigabyte frame buffer down to auto can give you performance increases in some games and at the very least it won't make a difference at all in performance so i would say it's a wise decision to switch from four gigabyte to auto and then if you do notice any sort of uh, frame rate issues or performance issues try switching back to four gigabyte and see if that resolves it um, in terms of going back down to bios uh, i honestly if you're comfortable with 
downgrading and doing all that, by all means, go for it. If you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. It's the same process as a computer because it is a computer, as a Windows machine, sorry. Um, but if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not too comfortable with it, just wait, honestly. Wait a week, two weeks, and Asus, I'm sure, will push out a new BIOS update that will automatically update through the My Asus or through the Control Center Windows updates and all that. And you won't need to worry about it. Just one day you'll turn it back on and there will be a BIOS update. Uh, that would be my recommendation for maybe the less tech savvy or people that just, eh, whatever, I don't really care going through all the hassle. To close things off, uh, obviously I have more content coming in the future. I'll be doing more head-to-head -head comparisons, benchmarks with the Steam Deck, things like that. Uh, undervolting, overclocking, uh, whatever, yeah. If you've been around on the channel before, you kind of know what I like to do. Uh, if not, I'm kind of into handhelds, computers, overclocking, undervolting, <laughs> I don't know, tweaking computers, I guess, tweaking handhelds, playing around with new technology is always cool too. Um, yeah, so if you guys are new here, I have posted in my YouTube community chat thing that once I hit a thousand subscribers, I will be giving away a full price game. Uh, that full price game will be kind of like voted on the community. So once I hit a thousand subscribers, I will then make a post and a poll in my community and people can vote on which game they would like me to give away. And then I'll leave that up for about a week or so. And then I'll, uh, I'll make it tied into a specific video and then people will just leave a comment on that video and then I'll just use a random picker app on uh, for YouTube to pick a winner for that. I feel like that's probably the most fair way that I can do it because if I do it the other way of like how I impose the uh, codes into the video, not everyone's going to be up when I post it or whatever, right? So this is, in my opinion, the better way of doing it because it allows more people to be involved in it and it allows for more fair draw method as well <laughs> um, but at this point i'm probably just rambling as usual so if you guys need any help doing this uh, if you want any more uh, video request ideas just let me know in the comments uh there should be some more sponsored content coming up in the future with a nintendo switch style handheld emulation device so that should be pretty cool uh but yeah beyond that again if you made it this far thanks for watching and i hope you all have a great day